Hi everyone. The sun is shining like in the background of this screen and it's a beautiful day. And I just wanted to do a little video to kind of get you guys up to date with what's happening with me and just to share a few thoughts. So it's been busy on the mediumship front. I had a wonderful weekend this weekend just past working with a lovely medium um, a friend of mine, Penny Francis. And we had a wonderful opportunity to work with people um, with Penny teaching mental mediumship and myself teaching trance mediumship. And it was great to share that space with another um, tutor, but more importantly, another friend. And it was it was a great time. And I think all that attended had a really good time. So that's that's been a great um a great recent memory, a great um thing to be thankful for. There's lots going on in my life. A lot of my time is taken up with regular work. Um I work a regular day job outside of doing the the spirit work, let's say. And so obviously with these hot days, I like to get up and about early, um, getting up before it's even light. So when the clock says three something, you know you're getting up early when it usually says five or six. So I've trying to been trying to avoid the worst of the heat and it seems to be working. Now, when it isn't work and it isn't spirit work, it's the massive task to keep a Labrador puppy occupied. So myself and my wife have got our fourth dog or a sixth dog in, in total, but the fourth one to our house now, and she is called Honey. She's a beautiful, beautiful little dog. And we are having fun and games, um, keeping things out of her mouth that shouldn't be there. And she has her own temperament, her own um, very strong will, shall we say. So she has her own personality. She has her own vibrancy, her own mind to know what she wants. And that kind of takes me to a um, big reason, really, why I wanted to do a little video. So for those of you that don't know um, the backstory of Honey, Back in 2010, we got a little black Labrador crossed Labradoodle called Poppy. And we rehomed her. Um, circumstances meant that the previous owner couldn't keep her. And it was no fault of their own, really. And um, But we had this wonderful opportunity to give a home to a 12-week-old little Labrador puppy that we then called Poppy. Now... We had 13, just over 13, wonderful, wonderful years with Poppy. And when I was teaching at a spiritual retreat in 23rd of April, 2023, unfortunately, Poppy passed suddenly. She collapsed at home and it turns out she'd had heart failure. So I was away teaching and I couldn't get back in time and it was... It was a difficult time. I can't lie. It was a difficult time. More so, I'd say, probably for my wife because she had to deal with that on her own. And it was, it caused a great deal of um, of sadness, understandably, I think. But I remember at this retreat, the day after Poppy passed, I was back in my room in between sessions and um, the um, the awareness came to my mind and there was a like a song, like a tune in my head. And I don't remember the specific words completely, but I do remember this following sentence being said. And it was, I'll be back again at the start of summer. And it was going over and over in my mind to a tune. Not a tune that I recognised, it was just there. 
And I took that to mean that, you know, Poppy um, was saying that she'll be back at the start of summer. Now, with with that understanding, I also became aware that when she'd return, she would be like a pale um, yellow, almost white Labrador. And Poppy was black. And I, I hoped that it was going to be early summer last year. But of course, this was early April that Poppy um, passed. And so it would have been a big, a big ask to return within two months, especially as it's nine weeks um, that a puppy is in gestation. So throughout the course of last year, every time friends of ours um, who are Labrador breeders would have a litter of puppies, we would always inquire, you know, are there any yellow ones due? And two or three litters went by and there were no yellow ones, not female anyway. And then at the, I think it was after Christmas this year, we found out that um, the breeder's daughter, her Labrador bitch was yellow and she was going to be bred and there's a good chance that some of those pups may be um, yellow. And who knows, they could be male, or not they could be male or female, and that they would be obviously um, male or female, and we were hoping for a female. So at the start of April, we, we knew the time was getting closer and closer um, before the litter would be born. And... On the, I think it was the Sunday, I had um, travelled over on the Saturday to take the next retreat. And um, on the Sunday, there were signs that she was in labour and there was going to be this litter of pups. Nothing happened Sunday, nothing happened Monday. People were asking me during the course and saying, you know, has she had her pups yet? Because I knew this was going to happen. And then on the Wednesday morning, my wife had sent me a message and said, um, she's had her pups. She had them last night on the 23rd. And sorry, it wasn't the 23rd. It was the same day Poppy passed away on the Tuesday of the retreat. And this was then, Honey was born on the Tuesday of the same retreat the following year. So exactly, you know, one year to the day. Um which was amazing, you know, exactly one year. And I just thought, this is this is a sign. And, you know, then we heard that two of the yellows um, were bitches. And I saw pictures of the two, the two yellows and we had a choice. You know, it was our pick, which one do we want to choose? And my wife said, you know, is there one that you felt drawn to? And I, I circled a picture and I sent it to her and she said, that's the same one that I've chosen. So again, it was another sign. I'm thinking, you know, this is looking like we're, we're singing off the same hymn sheet. So um, I came back from the retreat and I came home from work one day and we'd eaten tea and I went into the kitchen and I stopped and I said, you know what? I said, I really like the name Honey. And there was this gasp from the dining room. And my wife said, I can't believe you said that. And I said, well, why? And she said, I was walking the boys earlier. And um, it came to my mind that I really like the name Honey. And then she said to the boys, um, you know, I bet I'll poo-poo the idea. And I said, no, I love the name. And so we didn't know this. This this happened completely independently. Lisa was at home, I was at work, and then I came home, just had this realisation that I knew what name I liked. So, again, we took that as another sign. Now, I had said to the spirit world, the universe, however you want to see things, um, you know, if Poppy is going to come back to us, you need to prove it. You need to show me that it really is Poppy, that we don't just get a random Labrador, um, you know, hoping that it's her. 
And so things were starting to happen to start to make me think, look, this this really is um, what we hope for it to be. So if we fast forward a couple of weeks, um, so Honey would have been right about two, two to three weeks old. And the breeder messaged us and said, do you know which one of the two um, yellow bitches you're interested in? And and we said, well, we don't know which one it is from, you know, a photo that we'd seen. Um, but we circled one of the photos where we knew that was the one we were drawn to. And then it turns out it was this this little one with the like, pink nose rather than the black nose. And she said, oh, I've registered the, the pups with the kennel club and I've given them all their pedigree names. And the one that you've chosen is called Diamond Honey. And you could have knocked me over with a feather. So there is this this further sign, this further confirmation that the one that our intuition guided us to, the the name of all the names that we both agreed on just came to us. And that the breeder happened to use the name Honey and she didn't know about our plans, about what we were going to call her. She used the name Honey within her pedigree name. So she's like a Honey Diamond Honey. Um, so that kind of really made me think, look, this this is planned. This really is Poppy. Um, or that spirit, the spirit of Poppy. Kind of is she coming back you know is this is this her deciding that you know one lifetime with us wasn't enough and she wanted to experience life again and don't get me wrong the i believe the soul of honey and the soul of poppy you know are are two separate souls um but that consciousness of poppy and honey are shared there's a like a shared consciousness that's choosing to incarnate in two different souls that's just my thought and so as we've watched her grow and she's you know not, not four months old yet as we've watched her grow um there's lots of lots of little things you know those sort of strange little habits that your dogs have over the course of 10 12 15 years there's little things that honey does that is very much a reminder of poppy and how she was um and i i really believe and this was borne out by um the experience of oscar and ted ted is a chocolate labrador that we have and oscar was our very first dog and again i really absolutely believe that oscar made that same choice that poppy did and his consciousness um has has lived the life of Oscar and his consciousness is coming back and there is another soul with us that we call Ted. And I I am just adamant that that is the case, that our animals do have a choice. They make a decision about where they want to live their life. And isn't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful that they do that? Um and so I just wanted to share that story. Um, it means a lot to us, and I'm sure there's many of you out there that have had similar experiences where you know that the the animal that you may have living with you right now bears a lot of the hallmarks of an animal that's now crossed over. And it's it's wonderful delivering messages as a medium. I have received messages from animals and I have um, absolutely had wonderful validation, you know, for their recipient about their their life, what they used to do, where they were, even what their name is in a different language. You know, some really remarkable things have been shared with me and it's a real privilege. And I think that that love of the the spirit of the consciousness that does pervade animals it pervades the world around us that consciousness is an eternal aspect of our spirit and our soul and 
I hope that as as I continue to work with the spirit world, that they give me further proof and further um, thoughts to consider. To say humanity doesn't have this divine right to say that we, you know, we know everything and we rule the world because we don't. We share the world with many, many other things. And I guess um, trying to be more mindful and respectful of the consciousness and that love and the the intelligence of, of those spirits is a wonderful and remarkable thing. So that's me. That's what I wanted to say. And I'd love to hear your comments or your feedback. You know, share your stories with me, get in contact with me. Um, you can connect with me on my Facebook page, Andrew Codling, Medium and Tutor, or you can email me, info at andrewcodling.com. Send me a message, find me on Facebook. Let's chat about it. I'd love to hear your messages, but I think I've probably talked for long enough. So I will catch up with you sometime soon. Take care. Bye now.